Hello and welcome to our Light Institute and Sanctuary of Light Sunday Meditation. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, we divide this meditation into three parts, which we hope will uh, help you to access your higher self, the light that you carry, and the power that you have to give out a beautiful energy, healing energy, into our world. So in the first part, we ask our higher self to take form. It's the intuitive essence of your soul. It's your own inner voice, your own guide. And as it takes form, it can take any form, we have it touch our body and bring it in so that as we sit in meditation, we are sitting in the frequency of our own soul, our higher self. Then I will make an um sound so that you can push your pause button and sit as meditation for as long as you wish. The second part of the meditation is what we call the practice of radiance. It's bringing in light from the cosmos down through the top of our head, down into the stomach, into the solar plexus, and radiating it out from there. This increases your presence, it builds the energy that you have to give out into the world, and it aligns you with light, and everything is made of light. So it's very healing and powerful. Another OM. And then in the third part of the meditation, each week, we receive requests from around the world to focus our meditation into the world itself. It could be a situation or um, groups of people or anything that's happening. And this week, since we're coming into the time of giving around the world, uh, we're going to meditate on ourselves as the giver, looking out into the world and asking the world what frequency of light it needs from us, you may focus on your family or a group of people or, or the whole world. It doesn't matter. It's just the idea of feeling that you have the power of the giver and that you will give that frequency of light out to whomever you're going to give gifts to or you wish to give to gifts to and um, what those gifts are uh, so that we initiate this time of giving from a place deep within the spiritual energy, within the heart uh, of our consciousness and our purpose. And when we radiate energies out into the world, it makes a difference. So let's begin. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath into your body. Hold it at the top for a moment and then breathe out through your mouth slowly. This exhalation stimulates the meditative state in the brain. Once more, breathe in and breathe out slowly. Ask your higher self, the intuitive essence of your soul, your own inner voice, to take form for you. It could be a light or a being or a tree, an animal, an equation. It doesn't matter what form it takes. Just bring it in to your consciousness now. And to ask your higher self to touch your body where you hold your own divine essence, your own divine source. And just imagine that touch anywhere in your body. And breathe deeply into that touch. Activating that point of reference to your spiritual source. And then draw your higher self into your body through that point. And just imagine that as you sit in meditation now, you are sitting as your own true soul. Om. Take a deep breath into your body and reach up with your consciousness up into the cosmos, the streaming cosmos of light and pull down a beam of brilliant white light down to the top of your head, down into your stomach, your solar plexus, and from there laser that beam out from you. 
And just feel that you can continually draw the light in through you and extend it out. Feel how that quickens you, clears your consciousness, your quiets your mind, brings you into meditation. And feel this power of light again, supporting you, healing you, and bringing your essence, your purpose into the world. Breathe deeply into your body and ask all of those who wish for a gift from you, whether it's a gift in this holiday time or it's a gift of the cosmos or spirit, but just bring forward for you, just see who arrives, it might be the entire, of, entirety of humanity. Bring those that you want to give and who wish to receive from you into your mind's eye and see who that is. And now, ask them what frequency of light could be the energy of that gift that will awaken in them and support them so that they feel gifted. Take that first color that they show to you. And reach up again into the cosmos and pull that color, exactly that frequency of light, down through the top of your head and laser it out to them and feel the power and the choice of being the giver. Radiate that light that represents the gifts until you perceive a shift that they receive the joy, the acknowledgement the loving reception of that gift just continue to do that sending that light until you feel a shift and be in a meditative state supporting within you the consciousness of being the giver. Take a deep breath into your body and open your eyes. And know that with your eyes open, you can still carry these kinds of energies. We don't have to go into the cave to meditate. Life is meditation. It's just a point of consciousness. It's an energy into which we enter in order to be our true selves. The second part of this meditation is called knowings. And people from around the world send us questions that we can converse and through those conversations. We can uplift ourselves and everyone else who's participating. And so let's hear what these questions are today. Allison? The first question is from Hollywood, California. Hollywood, California. In the USA. Let's have it. Hello, I have just read some of your books and for the first time I have read about something, <clears throat> excuse me, I have been experiencing for a couple of years. When I close my eyes, I see colors in different shapes move and vibrate around me. Thanks to you, now I have more insight into this and feel more confident about it all. My question is that earlier this year, during the night, I woke up and before I fell back asleep, I started seeing patterns, like Victorian floral wallpaper expanding all around me. And then the patterns transformed into something very intense. It reminded me of science fiction movies with computer data changing very, very fast. It scared me and I stopped it. A healer told me it was what the mystics call walking through the fire and that I had been given a gift, but had been too overwhelmed by it. I haven't been able to find more information about it, and since I've read your books, I was thinking you would be a good person to ask. 
Thank you again for everything that you do. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, beginning to perceive colors moving around you is a kind of uh, walk, spiritual walking through fire, which means that uh, the gift that you have is a point of consciousness that is able to access the beyond the veil. And this can be frightening if we don't have someone to, to help us through. That's why at the Light Institute we do the incarnational work to look at what is the source of that and how you've used it in other incarnations of the soul. So you don't need to be afraid of it. And I would say that as it came first, like sort of floral patternings of wallpaper in the Victorian age, that's because um, the light uh, or some point of reference, which could have been something that, that triggered your consciousness in, the day, in, in that day, but it's referencing probably another incarnation of your soul. Now that incarnation or that reference point may be associated with these co computer patternings that are moving very quickly. Those are galactic kinds of energies. And so what uh, is a, definitely the walking through fire is to come to a place where it's not only, okay, I'll be all right with this, it's not going to overwhelm, it's not going to hurt me. But the question is, how can you use it? So I would begin by always, whenever you see something like that, immediately ask your higher self to take form or to touch your body so that you feel as if your soul energy is guiding you. This is not bombarding you in some negative way. This is your higher self peeling away for you uh, the veil so that you might perceive, you might precognate something that's coming in the future. You might see something that's in the past that you could release so that it's not holding those that participated, especially you, uh, tethered to that situation. So I would say that you're in a funnel of initiation, as are everyone on this planet in truth, which is asking you to begin to realize that you can go across the veil, that you can see things that, that you wouldn't see with your rational mind or your daytime mind or any of those things, but they have meaning. They're not an accident. They're not coming from the boogeyman. Um, you have within your brain and your consciousness a reference point to that computerized energy. It might be tremendous information coming from galactic frequencies, uh, energies uh, that are so much more cognizant of cosmic laws than are we. And so information could come to you that you could utilize in your own life or begin to uh, distribute into the world. So what I would say is, Every day, connect to the light, connect to your higher self. You could uh, do this exercise, higher self, touch my body as we did in meditation, and that way you'll know that you're safe. Or what frequency of light do I need today uh, to be able to awaken and use and find out what this is about? And, and so when that happens, you can always stop that play. You can stop it with your consciousness and say, show me what it means. And pretty soon you'll, st you'll see images, or just like you did with the Victorian flower wallpaper. Interesting image, isn't it? Wallpaper covering the wall, covering the protection or the enclosing. And so what I would say to you is something, your own higher self, is asking you to expand your consciousness and look beyond the veil and find that it's not only something that you've done in incarnations before, but that it's something that you could utilize as a gift to this world. So I would say congratulations, don't be afraid. Yes. Allison, second question. It's from Nepal. Nepal. Dear Chris, why is there such a need for validation on our planet? I see so many amazing things in the world that in my heart I know are true, but that are ignored, condemned, or even laughed at because they are not proven or recognized by a valid source whether it is experts or scientists or someone famous. Mm. This is so true. And of course, in past times, it was, it was more violently true. If you knew something or you saw something or, or had a, a point of wisdom or even something that would change science, people resisted it because of their fear. And uh, people wanted that fear to be there so that you would not shake the world, so to speak. 
And we humans really want validation. And we have deeply in our psychogenetic inheritance been imprinted with your value has to do with being accepted. It's very primordial from your primordial body. But the initiation at this time is for you to be able to laugh back and, and not feel that you have to make someone understand or believe what you, what you perceive or what you know, but simply to wear that, so to speak, to live that and to let it flow out from you. There are people everywhere who want to hear what you have uh, experienced and have their own experiences. And so it's very important not to be bothered by that. We are evolving, cultures evolve and very slowly. And uh, so the initiation for you, dear one, is to not be uh, stimulated or reactive to the fact that people make fun of something. They made fun of, of consciousness 20 years ago. They made fun of incarnations uh, a long time ago. Now everyone uses the word consciousness. Now everyone talks about meditation or healing and, and things that, that are not a part of the rational world. Remember that actually the true science of science is to see something that we don't understand and begin to explore it and to find out how we could use it, what it really is, how it works. And so if you um, know things, let's say, and people around you uh, have laughed at them, you need new friends. You need to go on. Uh, we come into this world, we choose our parents, we magnetize people from other incarnations, and for, for rebalancing and for healing and for all of those things. And we often think that we have to stay with whatever we were born with. We don't. So if there are things that other people laugh at, it's okay. That's their story. It's not yours. So begin to trust yourself and your higher self and uh, begin to call in situations and people who uh, can recognize what you're talking about can illuminate you and you them. Life is full of adventures and above all, the purpose of life is the evolution of the soul. It begins with ourselves. Just let go of the pain of it. You don't have to carry it. Yes? The last question is from Ireland. Ireland? Chris, I need your help. I need a break from this world and everything in it, and I would rather be able to do this without actually having to die or dose with drugs and drinking. I love life, but I just can't get away from the global intensity, even though I live in a very remote area. Please, would be very grateful for any suggestions. I think a lot of people would join you in that conversation right now. This is a funnel of initiation that's that doesn't seem like it's going to take us anywhere good, that it's closing in on us worse and worse each day. But it's not. It's not. It's just pushing us. It's putting pressure on us to realize that what's happening in the global arena is us. We've caused it, and we are the ones who are going to take care of it. And so um, when you see these things, what you want to do is shift your attention to, hmm, how is that about me? Uh, something's happening in the environment. Uh, what can I give with my consciousness or, or my actions? Grow a tree, plant some plants, uh, love animals, speak to, join groups that, that uh, trust the goodness of our world and know that you're not here to get out. One of the things that I learned in my six near-death experiences is you don't get out until you're ready. So the way you take a break from life is that you switch your response to life. And indeed, you're in Ireland, maybe you need to stand out in that wind, uh, or look across the hills, and, and, and let your, your consciousness rest, and let the world talk to you, uh, uh, so that you can be inspired, and ask your higher self in your body, how can I help this world? And so that once you start thinking about how you could participate, even if it seems not very important to you or very small, it's not small. You are the apex of your period, pyramid. That means that there are many people that are 
that form the base of your pyramid that you have known for many incarnations that are connected to you that you've attracted. You have support. You have people to join you. And this time on the planet is about working as a group. It's not about the leaders. It's not about the powers that be. It's about the powers within. And so um, the break that you can take is to go into nature and remember that uh, nature will show us so many things and bring us to a place of wonderment and inspiration and the beauty. We need beauty in life. Maybe it's for you to, to look around you and begin to make some beauty, whether it's growing things or making things or, or simply visualizing, but holding your consciousness that you are here, not as an accident, you are not here to suffer the, the seemingly destructiveness of humans, but that you are here to participate and to heal. And you do have it in you. Every soul on this planet has something to give. It's time to give now in every way that comes to you and to continue on and on and upward. Let the smile come to you too.